Good afternoon, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And welcome you to our meditation on Chronicles. And today we are in 1 Chronicles 4, uh, verses 9 and 10, Tyler. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his brother called on his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the Lord of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. All right. So, uh, enlarging my border. Um, you understand there's a certain point that the border of Jabez could not be enlarged uh, as far as uh, inheritance went because the, the land was fixed by right of inheritance. Uh, and back when, back when the prayer of Jabez books and everything else were real big, Tyler, you were just a wee lad back then, like in kindergarten, I think. Um, a, 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 I don't remember if he was a brother in Christ or one of, one of the sister churches, but he came out with a book and he looked at the Hebrew and he said, you know, <clears throat> as it was translated, enlarge my border uh, and, and let your hand be with me and bless me, was Jabez actually asking for prosperity on his flocks and on his fields. Not that he would just have more land and more power to dominate others, um, which unfortunately is kind of where most people took the prayer of Jabez. Give me more so I'm bigger and stronger. Yeah, no, that's, that's not... Because why? What does he say? That you would keep me from doing evil and hurting others. What was his name? Kid who causes me pain. So his prayer was what? Don't let the name my mother gave me be the life that I have. Uh, can you think of another kid that his mother tried to curse him with a name? Benjamin. Yeah, Benjamin. His mother tried to name him Benoni. And his dad was like, no, just no. Not you're, you're dying in childbirth. I am not burdening the kid with a lifetime of guilt with the name you want for him. And, and at the heart of that, the answer to God's prayer is, bless me in you so that I can overcome my name. And, and that's really the heart of it. And that is, that is part of the aspect of the Christian life. You get a new name, a new identity, so you can have a new purpose. You don't have to be who you used to be. You don't have to be what someone else named you. You can do great things for God regardless of what someone else named you. And uh, and then we look at one other thing real quick. Uh, 1 Chronicles 4, 37 through the end of the chapter, Tyler. Ziza, the son of Shiphi, the son of Elon, the son of Jediah, the son of Shimri, the son of Shem Shemaiah. Shemaiah. These mentioned by name were leaders in their families, and their father's house increased greatly. So they went to the valley of Gedor, as far as the east side of the valley, to seek pasture for their flocks. And they found rich, good pasture, and the land was broad, quiet, and peaceful, for some Hamites formerly lived there. These recorded by name came in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah, and they attacked their tents in the Menunites. Menunite, Meunites, yeah. Meunites, who were found there and utterly destroyed them as it is to this day. So they dwelt in their place because there was pasture for their flocks there. Now some of them, 500 men of the sons of Sh Simeon, went to Mount Seir, having as their captains Palatiah, Neriah, Rephiah, and Uziel, the sons of Ishi. And they defeated the rest of the Amalekites who had escaped. They have dwelt there to this day. All right, so... Uh, you said, what? Why are you reading that, man? That's like crazy hard stuff. No, it's not. In the days of Hezekiah, some of the descendants of Simeon came, conquered part of Edom, and what Saul had left undone with the Amalekites, these sons of Simeon, okay, so the family of Benjamin didn't do it. The family of Simeon finishes what the family of Benjamin didn't, and that's and you say, no, it's it's an interesting thing that because this has been a couple couple three hundred years that have passed from the time that Saul didn't, and now it's finally being taken care of. And uh, what's the value in that, Tyler? Since I'm asking you a question with no preparation or advance warning, 
What's important that God records that now? I don't know. All right. Good, good. The acceptable answer would have been because God was still minding what had been left undone. That's right. And here's the other part of that, though. In America, most Americans think in 20, 30, 50 years, tops. But when you come to the Bible, God's keeping watch over stuff that runs for centuries on end. Saul didn't. In the days of Hezekiah, these guys did. But keep in mind, Chronicles was written after they came back from the Babylonian captivity. So we're talking almost 600 years, and God has it recorded. These guys did it. Because the book of Chronicles is the stuff that people did get right, even though they were living in a time of tremendous wrong. So, anything else you want to add? No, sir. Invite them back for tonight, then. We hope to see you this evening at 7 o'clock at the Lake Butler Church of Christ in Lake Butler, Florida, either in our live stream or in person, for our Wednesday evening services with our lessons currently being on the Psalms, uh, led by Brother Greg Edwards, one of our deacons. All right, with that, have a blessed night.